one of the things, of course, school does is it prevents these kind of connections between different areas from occurring. That's what the short answer test is about. And Oxford and Cambridge got rid of it a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago because they said people who do well on short answer tests, they memorize bits of information, but they don't connect the bits of information. And when they seem to be able to connect the bits of information, it's because they've memorized someone else's connections. The better the school, the more sets of connections you memorize. But you can't do that for yourself. You know, it's, it's like these machines where you guys are all too young to remember. They used to sell machines that would relieve the stress of lifting weights. You'd put the weight in your hand, but the machine would lift your arm in the way. Only trouble was, your muscle knew the difference. But the people buying the machinery didn't. Well, it looks exactly the same. Anyway, I, I, I put me back on course here. Is there any connection between frustration and aggression? And what effect does schooling have on that? Well, you, you, I mean, you answer your own question by asking it. I mean, the connection's intimate. School removes your volition in all important ways, even who you speak to are not the arts of association as valuable or more valuable than anything else you learn when you're young. I read how executive hiring is done, and it almost never has to do with your training in whatever you're being hired for. It's, is this the kind, I'm, I'm thinking of Apple now, I believe. Is this the person we would like to have around three years from now? And bend an elbow with, or play golf with, or just talk with. I mean, and that's why you're passed from set of executives, set of executives, so they can sign off. Yeah, he's okay. You know, we can. Uh, but we don't tell kids that, right? It's people who have the highest grade point average and the highest. Uh, SAT scores. Well, I spent an hour, years, well, not so long ago, within 10 years, with the admissions officer for Harvard College, and about 30 years ago, an hour with the admissions director at Princeton. And let me tell you, their polite dismissal of grades and SAT scores was intimidating to listen to, as if you'd have to be crazy to let somebody in. Let me see if I can uh, condense how you get into Harvard or Princeton. Of course, you get into both by donating a building, but, but how do other people get in? They're being analyzed on the basis of their ability to either become wealthy or famous, either one will work. Famous, like wearing a billboard saying, I went, went to Princeton. There's that actress Jodie Foster, I went to Princeton. Look at where the rest of the actors and directors went. They didn't go anywhere, <laughs> but Jodie did. So that's the one we hear about. Uh, it's the Harvard lady said, we look for a record of excellence and what does excellence consist of? It's sometime in the first 18 years of your life, figuring out how to add value to the people around you. Uh, although she didn't say this, in a way that catches public attention. So you might walk across the United States or bicycle the perimeter of the country or row across the Atlantic Ocean as a physical way. You might start a little charity or set up some weather service or some pollution monitoring around uh, Hartford. There, there are 
a substantial number, a small fraction, but a substantial number of kids doing this as we sit here. They're writing a record of being able to add value to the community around them. And then the other fellow, the, the Princeton guy, said the same thing in different words. I asked him, what this bought 68 roughly i ask him what part of a resume submitted do you look at first and when, the answer metaphorically caused my jaw to open hobbies he said i said i've been taught all my life leave that off because it's not germane he said, on the contrary, it's the only honest information you're likely to get. How does someone spend their time when it's their free choice to spend? He said, it's a window into their mind and their heart. Well, 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 <laughs> what kind of hobbies? He said, well, ideally someone would have a physical hobby, an intellectual hobby, and a social hobby, because that would show they're exploring these large, well, physical hobby. You mean football, baseball? Well, he said, it's better than nothing, but we would prefer not to see teams. As I've been told all my life, the team sports identify your ability to work in a team. He said, what happens in a team sport is if you decide to dog it, it's very hard to tell which guy on the line has dogged it or not, or which running pack has gone down quicker than he should have gone down. There, He said, we prefer uh, solo hobbies that involve physical danger. You mean you want kids to put their necks at risk? For example, what? I said, he said, well, horseback riding is a dead giveaway. The horse weighs a half a ton or more. Uh, if you do trail riding, you don't know what you're doing. Your head gets caught on a branch and, and you're the headless horseman. If the horse doesn't like you, it'll roll over on top of you. And I know immediately, because that last time I rode a horse was down in Veracruz, Mexico. The horse didn't like me. Took me out on the main highway with crazed Mexican drivers going 100 miles an hour and 18 wheelers. And it laid down on top of me. I was terrified because I could see these trucks coming. Didn't like that the last time I rode. So he said, you have to actually know what you're doing. You can't say, is this an A job or a B job if you live and are intact to this. Then he said, sailing a small boat, these little 12-footers outside of land. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, you end up in the middle of the Atlantic, you know, or, you, or, or if wind comes up, you can't see landmarks because of the waves. Uh, I said, but those things are associated with uh, the prosperous classes. What, what could somebody in ordinary circumstances do? He said, well, we just let somebody in. This is probably one of the nicest factoids in my mind, in my life. We just let someone in who invented his own sport and kept records competing against himself, his past performance, his present performance. It was, get ready for this, visualize this, seatless unicycle riding over broken terrain. If I had 10 lifetimes, the thought of doing that wouldn't occur. I started getting on a unicycle, let alone one without a seat, let alone riding it over broken terrain. So they let him in because they knew he was on the fast track. <laughs>